Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So today we're going to talk about precision mechanics. This uh, Ron Repeatometer uh, collaboration series with Saunders uh, Machine Works, uh, NYC CNC, has uh, brought up an excellent discussion about uh, precision mechanics. So we're going to take a look at uh, differential screws, uh, quarter 20 uh, thread resolution, or quarter 28 thread resolution, um, a membrane type flexure, and uh, some other stuff. So uh, let's check it out and uh, learn something about precision mechanics. Okay, these are all examples of what I call membrane flexures. And what I mean by membrane is um, it's an added piece. Okay, so it's an, oops, it's an added on piece. All right, you know what? Just stay. Okay. Um, so it's an added on piece. So we have the body of the, uh, of the instrument here, and then we've added a membrane that's attached um, that is the actual flexure. So this is the hinge um, that flexes and becomes the flexure. Okay. So there's, that's one example. Um, this is a, one that I made. This is a, uh, another. It's very similar to that one. Now, there's a real interesting one in here, and we'll take this off, and I'll show you the inside of this. And this is a what's called a parallel membrane flexure here. I'll bring you in a little closer, but the way this works here is it's got two flexures here that are clamped, and then a screw adjustment. So what it does is it's moving this indicator up and down, and it actually moves it in a in a parallel line. It's actually an excellent uh, an excellent type of movement. There's no um, there's very little mechanical hysteresis. It's very smooth, um, and um, um, there's just no uh, stick slip um, stored energy in the system. So uh, it's kind of neat that way. So now we have an adjustment screw here that's pushing against this, and um, that's a, another subject that the that we're going to talk about today is, uh, you know, how fine does a screw have to be, right? Real fine screws are not the easiest thing to make, and you need special taps for them if they're little holes, and um, so there's all kinds of things. So you'd be surprised how good of a resolution that you can uh, get with a properly designed um, um, screw mechanism, the kind of resolution that you can get with just common screw threads. So we're going to take a look at that. But let's look at these membranes a little closer and you guys can get an idea how this thing works. All right, these are the, these are the flexure elements here. So these are, you know, thin shim stock, uh, spring steel shim stock, and they're clamped on either side with a, with a bar that has a bunch of screws in it. Um, you know, much the same way these this guy here is uh, is clamped. Okay, now that's a thicker flexure, so uh, it doesn't need it doesn't need the uh, uh, the over clamp bar, I should say. Uh, you know, the it's actually a long washer is what it is. Um, anyway, it just prevents stress concentrations around the the holes in the uh, in the membrane there. But you can see how this one works here. Okay, it's got a little return spring to keep tension against the uh, against the uh, adjustment screw. And this adjustment screw, let's see if I can kind of see what that looks like. Um, it's not super fine. I want to say, well, you know what? Let's just tip it up and take a look at it in there. I wonder if you can see in there. Let's see if I'm getting that. Turn it a little more there. That's where we're looking right there. And I don't know, I'd, it's might be 32 threads per inch, eh, 20, I don't know. So it looks about like a quarter 28, honestly. So, <laughs> um, And the, the amount that it's moving, I don't know, it might be 32 threads per inch, something like that. Actually, it's probably metric. I think this is a, a, a Metatoyo here stand. Now we've got our CEJ uh, indicator here. Now keep in mind that uh, on that Ron repeatometer, we have a pretty short range of motion. And this only has six tenths, plus or minus six tenths um, travel. Okay, so that little flexure that's in the Ron repeatometer really is not moving very far. So let's go take a look at something else on that. All right, let's take a quick look at the, 
how that Ron repeatometer is set up there. Okay, so it's got a it's got a bar, and then we have a uh, we have a cut through the bar. Okay, like so, and then it's got some length this way. Okay, so this is the area that everybody seems to have a problem with. Now keep in mind that Ron Repeatometer has been around since 1953 and um, they work fine. And uh, now I would also agree that this is a very, this is a crude solution. And uh, from a design standpoint, it's kind of lame. Okay. So we can do better than that. And let's just take a quick look at this though. So this thing's moving up and down at this end, right? But honestly, it's not moving very much. So if we just assign some quick numbers here, I think somebody said that this is roughly a five inch radius here, somewhere in that region, okay? So if we just draw a little triangle here like this, okay? And um, we say that this leg is five inches here. I'm getting all that, right? Yeah, okay. And we looked at the CEJ indicator and it has plus or minus six tenths, okay? So what that means is this thing can move up and down um, about 1.2 thousandths of an inch. But let's just look at one side. Let's just analyze one side. So let's just say it's a, the six tenths, right? So zero, six over five. Let's get the handy box out here. Six and a five divide arc 10. So that angle there is 0 0.00688 degrees. All right, for our degrees, minutes, and seconds, folks, that is, that's uh, 24 arc seconds. Okay, so that's not a lot of movement. <clears throat> so we're well, um, you know, without doing the stress analysis, we're well within the elastic range of that. So this joint is probably not subject, subjected to excessive stress, okay? But we all agree that it's kind of a lame design. So let's do something a little bit better. And um, I think we can um, um, re-engineer this a little bit and get a membrane flexure out of that, okay? And do a nice job of it and uh, have a much uh, uh, more elegant mechanical solution.
Okay, a little bit below flush. All right, let's go cut this thing in half. Try it out. Let's put this little monkey together. Oh, holes don't line up. Pretty good. Yeah. That's more than enough movement right there. And now you just need a clever uh, over travel mechanism. All right, here's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> so we want it to be. We want it flush with the surface, so we don't want it sticking up, ideally. So let's let's uh, draw one side of this. So we're looking at uh, we're looking at one surface there. Actually, let's do this. Let's draw that in there, just so just so folks get the idea, right? We don't care about that. So. Well, the, the, fl the stop has to prevent travel in two directions, so uh, down and up. So what I'm thinking is, um, what if we just cut a slot through like this, okay? Like that, let's do a little erase there, okay? And then uh, we cut a something that looks like that. And then uh, uh, that's a little bit hard to draw. So the idea is you take a fastener, something like that, and what it can do is it can drop into this, it can drop into this slot. It's threaded into the other member, okay? But when the flexure flexes, it pulls up against that shoulder that, or that shoulder there, and then if it extends the other direction, it butts up against the back of that slot. Um, and then it's all nice and flush and below surface. So let's try that. Um, that's a simple one. Another way you could do it is you could you can insert a piece in here that spans across that has a little bit of clearance. This is nice because it's adjustable. It's a little bit adjustable, so you can uh, you can change the relationship a little bit. Um, now the only negative on this, excuse me, I got hiccups is um, there's nothing that keeps it from turning necessarily. Um, so potentially uh, it could get out of adjustment and um, um, <laughs> well, potentially it could get out of adjustment. So um, we might add a, um, some thread locker to it or something like that to prevent it from moving uh, or make it s the movement stiff, I should say. Is what it might be a better way to do it. But let's, uh, let's cut a little slot in our, uh, our sample piece and uh, see how it works.
Okay, here's our, our little uh, over travel stop that we did. Um, we just got a little socket head cap screw in there. And it's actually uh, just the right thickness here that it gives me a little bit of free play in either direction when it's in the uh, um, kind of the null position of the, of the flexure. So it does its little job and keeps us from, uh, from injuring the flexure or yielding the flexure by, by hyper or uh, extending it in either direction. So uh, now we can make minor adjustments uh, by just reaching in there and turning it that way. That seems to work. There's nothing that keeps it from rotating, uh, although there's no particular forces on this that make, want to make this uh, rotate in one direction or another. So I think that's the, a reasonably elegant solution for uh, kind of on the fly in the shop, um, but uh, simple and easy to machine. Let's take a look at uh, the adjusting screw mechanism next because uh, uh, there's a lot we can do in that area to, uh, to make it uh, much cooler. All right, so here's the other little thing that we wanted to talk about. So this is, this is a quarter 28 um, socket head cap screw. And I suggested that this would probably be uh, a reasonable adjustment screw for the Ron repeatometers or the, um, what do we call them, the uh, ultra, <laughs> I don't know. Well, John and I have to come up with a name for the, uh, the versions that, uh, that he's building. Anyway, um, I suggested that this might be a, um, a good adjustment screw. Now, my old buddy, um, Forrest Addy, from uh, the Practical Machinist, he chimed in and correctly pointed out that, uh, that this, is, this is probably a too coarse to make a good adjustment screw since our indicator resolution is, you know, in the 20 millionths per division range, okay? Um, so making a, an adjustment to, to, to null the indicator, um, we probably need a, a finer screw. And he's probably right, but as an exploration and as a, and a, as a kind of a, a demonstration, we're going to check out just how good you can do with a, uh, with a quarter 28, okay? And um, the other thing that we're going to show here in a sec is something that's called a differential thread, okay? So we have a, another quarter, quarter 28 here, but this one's been very sneakily modified, and it has a tapped hole in the center of it that this 1032 screw can go into, if I can get it in there, okay? So, so this is a right-hand thread, that's a right-hand thread, and we can actually um, show uh, how we can create a very simple differential thread with these two screws. So this is quarter 28 and 1032, and um, what I've done is I've made a little, uh, and I'll zoom out a little bit and I'll show you in a sec, I made a little demonstration um, piece that's very similar in geometry to the, uh, the Ron Repeatometer um, uh, upper, upper limbs. So let's, uh, let's go over on the mill and let's take a look at this and uh, let's just uh, see how well we can do with this and talk about some of the design elements around how we apply screws for precision adjustments. This is a, uh, I don't know, I would call it an analog of the uh, the Ron Repeatometer upper limbs. So it has two bars that have a, actually a saw cut through them that the adjustment screw um, spreads apart as a flexure um, and adjusts the position of the indicator or allows you to null the, the indicator reading or uh, actually take pressure off of, the, uh, off of the indicator. So it's just made out of steel and I just kind of whipped this together. Um, just as kind of a demonstration piece, so I didn't show the construction of this, but uh, we're going to try it out here and uh, see how it behaves. So what we're going to do is, for starters, we'll put our uh, our quarter twenty-eight in there. Okay, actually, I need another uh, I need another screw there. I'm just going to put this. It's tap ten thirty-two on the bottom and quarter twenty-eight on the top. So I'm just going to put this in there to. Uh, to make a little spot that this other screw can bear against there. So let me run that in. And I've left a big space in there so it's just easier to see. It doesn't really affect the performance of that. Okay, so when we tighten this up, it's spreading these 
these two limbs apart. And this is a giant flexure is what this is. So let's set that in there. We're going to clamp it in the vise. And then what we're going to do is uh, set up an indicator here and to see what uh, how it behaves. So let me get that going and we'll be checking out. This, this, is, uh, this indicator is uh, 50 millionths per tick there. Oops. I think I'm, I think I'm against it. Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is our, our ambiguous quarter 28 screw here. Let's just, uh, let's just try it here, okay? So, you know, it works, okay? This diameter is pretty small, so the, um, you know, the radial movement is actually kind of tiny there. So, and it's also not very smooth right now, and I'll, I'll show you a way around that, all right? But we can easily adjust it within 50 millionths with a quarter 28 screw just straight up, okay? Now, what can we do to improve that? Well, the first thing we can do to improve that oops, is, is take this out, let's get rid of that, and we have another quarter 28 screw here that I'm going to show you, okay? And what we've done is we put a large knob on the top of it, okay? And what this does is it gives us just a uh, a better tactile feel, okay, and it gives us better radial resolution um, with our adjustment. So let's let's do that again. All right, so it's much easy. It's easier to turn, and it's also um, easier to hit our number, okay, um, because there's uh, there's more space between uh, the divisions. Uh, the larger the diameter you get here, okay. So, so it looks like our quarter 28 may work out for uh, um, adjusting our 20 millionths, uh, our indicator, okay? But we can also do better than that. Um, so the next, uh, the next upgrade here is, let's, let's take this out. <clears throat> the next simple upgrade that we can do in this particular system with the quarter 28 here is it's important these surfaces here, the surface that bears against the other surface that it's pushing against, uh, if they're polished and smooth and hard, then the whole mechanism behaves much better. All right, so what we can do here, and I've polished the, the end of this quarter 28 screw here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, oops, I'm gonna change this setup around, and I'm gonna put, try not to drop it, is I have a, a small hardened steel ball, right? And what I'm gonna do with that, let's get this kind of in position first, is I'm going to, use my handy dandy tweezers here, is I'm gonna put this as the contact point for the screw, okay, in there. And then I'm gonna, this is gonna run down and, uh, and bear against that, uh, against that screw. So let's try that and see how that behaves. And I can already feel the difference. It's just much smoother, okay? Um, so smoothness is important, and in precision mechanics, we call it uh, stick slip, okay? What that means is, you know, this herky-jerky motion that you get out of certain kinds of mechanisms, um, and it's called stick slip. And what that is, is you're building up energy in the system and then it's, it's releasing it in kind of an uncontrolled way, right? Which is really bad for precision, precision mechanics. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess that up, I can tell you. <laughs> so let's uh, get down close again. All right, we're pretty close there. And let's mess around with our adjustment here. Yeah, and it's just a lot smoother. It, you know, I can't really show you this in the, uh, you can't feel this in the video, obviously, but uh, you'll just have to trust me, guys, okay? And it makes sense. So what you want is uh, you want a hard, uh, two hard contact surfaces. Um, differential hardness is good. One slightly softer than the other, but hard on hard is generally um, uh, pretty good. So 
Okay, so we got our large resolution um, knob and uh, we're at quarter 28 and we got a hard ball under there. It's pretty tasty right now. I think we can do better than that though. Let's take a look at the differential screw next. Okay, this is the, uh, the differential screw here. And uh, what we have, we have quarter 28 on the top, 1032 on the bottom, and the inside of the quarter 28 is tapped for the 1032. So what you have is you have two different thread pitches, and as one advance advances, the other cancels part of that travel out, okay? And that's how a differential screw works. Now, in this case, the, the 1032 is fixed, and the quarter 28 is the moving member, okay? They're both right-handed threads in this case. There's a way to do it with right-hand and left-hand threads. And the way you can figure out, uh, there's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a, an equation for figuring out uh, the effective pitch uh, between when you have two different uh, thread pitches. And we'll, I'll show you that right now. Let me set this in here, kind of get it in position. All right, and so, the way you determine the effective pitch, okay, let's, let's just call this effective pitch is equal to um, 1 over P1 minus 1 over P2, okay? So this is our quarter 28, okay, and this is our, uh, our 10, 32 okay and I won't I won't bore you with the uh, the rest of the math but it comes out to an effective thread pitch of 224 threads per inch okay I did the math off camera so but you guys can do it yourself so effective pitch is equal to and this is you take 1 divided by 28 1 divided by 32 okay and you get uh, 224 threads per inch now I don't know if you've ever seen a 224 threads per inch screw, but uh, it basically looks like a, a human hair wound around a cylinder, okay? You can barely see it. All right, so let's, uh, let's try it out here. I'm all set up here, and unfortunately, I didn't put a knob on this one, but I got a little wrench here. But this will illustrate the radial movement that I'm doing to get uh, uh, indicator movement over here. So let me... Uh, get this going and uh, we'll take a look at uh, just how cool these are. All right, this is the differential screw here. So I'm just going to, actually, let me see if I can turn it by hand. Oh yeah, I can turn it by hand. Uh, it's, a it's a little snug uh, turning it by hand. I would, you know, if I had a nice knob like that, it would be better. But let's put this on there and you guys can get a, now watch the indicator and the arm of the wrench to get an idea of the resolution that we have here. It's actually almost the same uh, rate of change as the indicator needle, which is pretty cool, right? I'm just going to stop on that four there, okay? All right. So that's, that's the differential screw. That's effectively 224 threads per inch. All right, with simple common hardware, okay? And this has more than enough resolution to, uh, to do what we want to do on the Ron repeatometer. Um, setting it up, now one thing to keep in mind with differential screws is um, this is about an uh, increase of seven uh, fold on the, uh, the effective thread pitch of this particular screw. But it also reduces your travel by that same amount. So um, you don't get a lot of travel out of them, all right? So that you got to be careful. So they can be a little bit tricky to set up because you have limited range of movement, and uh, especially if you have a kind of a tight, a tight arrangement there. But anyway, they're pretty neat, and uh, um, you know you can use them for uh, where you need a really fine sc screw. Now, you know where are you going to buy a 224 thread per inch tap, right? It's a custom. It's going to be expensive. So this is a sneaky way to, uh, to do that.